In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about housing decision, rent versus buy, for example. One thing that you hear commonly said is that you should always buy instead of renting. And while that's a good rule of thumb, and perhaps you should always eventually do buy your own home, it may not always be the case that buying is better than renting. A lot of other things come in play. And one of the most important ones is the opportunity cost. If you see on that slide on the first bullet, the interest earnings lost on money money used for a down payment on a home versus the interest on a security deposit for an apartment. Uh, the down payment on a home can be very substantial. It could be tens of thousands of dollars. The idea is that once you put the down payment, that money just sit in there in equity on the home, but not really doing anything. And the comparison would be if that money was placed in a retirement account or some kind of a brokerage account, some kind of other form of investment where it grows, you need to understand that you're giving that up for the for the the, the privilege or the benefit of buying a home. Now, we're not saying that it's always going to be better to not buy a home. We're just saying that that's where the comparison starts, or at least that's the biggest piece that needs to be compared because the security deposit on apartment will be much, much smaller. So you take the difference and that's the opportunity cost, the actual interest earnings, not the amount of money. Uh, time and cost of commuting to work when you live in an area that offers less expensive housing or more space. It is very common that let's say you work downtown or in a city that you may not be able to afford a property near the area you work because it tends to be more expensive or if it's a dense city or very uh, a busy city to put it that way where they may not have actual houses nearby so whether you do it because of the lower cost or because you want an actual house and not a, not a condo for example then you have to understand the commuting. In some areas, it's it's very, very brutal. In some areas, it's not. It just depends. Some people commute hours to go to work. Then we have renters lose tax advantages and equity growth. Okay, so the equity growth, of course, if the property you purchase grows in value, that goes to you. It's on equity, so it's what we call paper money that you don't really get to do anything with it until you sell the property, uh, but it is value that you are, uh, is growing on your net worth. And tax advantages, it depends how you file your taxes now. Before it was always an automatic tax deduction. Now you have to choose uh, between the standard deduction and uh, the, the tax advantages of owning a property. Now, those laws change, so that's the current situation. It was different before. It may be different in the future. Time and money you spend to repair and improve a lower-priced home. Uh, so it is very common that in order to get a good price on a property, you might buy a property. They may need some repairs uh, up front, and you're aware of it. And what you do is you get the lower price. And over time, you do those repairs so that way it doesn't hit you too hard than just buying a pristine home for a much higher price. But it's going to take you time and money and effort. If you have a home built to your personal specifications, there is time, there is effort, and a lot more other considerations to take in place, but a whole different animal. It can get more complex to build your own home. I'm not saying that you actually take the hammer and the wood and you're doing the work, but to organize and get that arranged and get it done properly can be an uphill battle. Advantages of renting, mobility, moving is easier. If you need to move for any reason, all you do is get out of your, uh, you finish your lease or get out of it early if you want to, 
and no need to wait to try to sell it, maybe lose money in the sale, uh, and all those other complications. You, it's easy to get out. Fewer responsibilities. Uh, many maintenance and repairs are typically part of the renter's uh, responsibility. Uh, so you don't have to do that. But if you own the home, you have to do all that. Renters have fewer financial concerns and no expenses for property taxes, insurance, and upkeep. All that is built in your monthly rent. So while technically speaking, you're not paying it separate like that, it's still part of your monthly rent. However, it might come about the same as owning the property. The difference is typically a down payment versus a security deposit. Lower initial costs. Renters pay a security deposit, which is much less than the down payment. We discussed that earlier. Oh, closing costs, not just the down payment. When you uh, buy a property, there's these transactions like title search, inspections, uh, a series of things that are called the closing costs that are not part of the down payment. And it's also an expense when you buy a property. The closing cost can be negotiated where the seller pays a portion of it, but that's then comes down to price versus supply demand on the market, et cetera. Disadvantages and cost of renting, few financial benefits. As we mentioned, you don't get the tax deductions, you don't get the equity and things like that. Restricted lifestyle, limits regarding remodeling pets, sound, uh, sound, it depends. Uh, you may still have a problem with if you play your music too loud with your neighbors, regardless if you own or rent. But when you rent, there might be some community restrictions. Think of an apartment building, maybe a lot more complex than a house. But if you rent a house, it'll be about the same. Uh, pets, yes, there is a lot of uh, issues. A lot of places that rent do not allow pets. And if they do, you may face a lot more fees and restrictions, uh, size, uh, etc. Breed. Uh, remodeling well like a car when you lease an apartment or rent you're not allowed to make changes on the way you decorate or if you do there's a limitation we can do when you own the place you can do anything you want now there is also the the the, the different situations like if you are in a homeowners association or let's say a condominium where yes, you can remodel some things, but they will have some rules of what you can and cannot do. The rules will be a little more flexible than renting typically, but buying doesn't always give you full remodeling uh, rights to put it that way. It depends. Legal details. Lease is, le is a legal document that defines the conditions of the rental. So we're just defining what a lease is. It's a contract. Uh, and they will, there could be a lot of restrictions in there. Costs include a security deposit, utilities, and renter's insurance. Those are common costs. There could be more. Details of a lease. These are just some of the common things you should have written on the lease or should be the minimum in the contract. Uh, description and address of the property. You got to make sure that you're getting what you uh, asked for, what you're agreeing to. Uh, this, believe it or not, could be an issue uh, in an apartment complex. You pick a floor plan and a specific one at a specific floor or uh, level, if you want to cut it that way, or certain square footage or layout, uh, the place in the building, a lot of little details uh, with a specific view. But if it doesn't have, and then they say, oh, well, that's not available. Here's this one. They couldn't do that. The lease has to be very unit specific. And that's where the description address of the property comes in. Name and address of the owner landlord. In other words, you got to be able to have some information of the person that is uh, leasing the place to you. And by owner or landlord, doesn't have to be the actual owner because if you know an apartment complex, many times is a, a management company, but that's fine. Uh, name of tenant, that will be you. Uh, effective date and length of the lease, they got to be very specific, start date and end date. Amount of the security deposit, uh, the amount and due date of rent. Location where rent is paid. They have to tell you this is where the rent is expected to be paid. 
believe it or not, it's important. Whether it's online or an actual office or you mail it somewhere, most of them are online now. They have to give you a specific place where you can pay the rent. Many times there's more than one place, but there's always at least one. Date and amount of late rent payments. If you pay late, I should tell you so many days. Oh, like you have so many days before it's considered late. And once it's considered late, then this is the additional fee. If any. List of included utilities and appliances. Okay, appliances, self-explanatory. Uh, it has to specify if it's coming with a refrigerator, whether it has a washer dryer or not, oven, microwave, etc. It'll have to have a specific list of what's included in the rent, in the lease. Uh, utilities, some places do include water, electricity, gas. It depends. It just really varies a lot, but it will be listed, which has to be listed if it's included. Restrictions on certain activities, uh, pets, as we mentioned, remodeling. Uh, it will tell you there. It has to be very, very specific. If it doesn't say you cannot do it, then it's on them. Tenants right to sublet the rental unit. Uh, that just means that you lease the property. Do you have the right to then rent it out to somebody else uh, before your lease is over? Some do, some don't. You just have to ask uh, about it. Some have set of rules about it. Uh, believe it or not, this happens in very volatile markets where you go ahead and lock in a long-term lease an apartment for a certain price. And as soon as the rents go up, you go ahead and rent it out and you make the profit, the difference every month. And the uh, maintenance and everything is still responsibility of the previous, of the actual original leaser. Charges for damages or for moving out later or earlier than the lease expiration date. Okay, damages. Now, charges for dam damages uh, may not be specific to a specific dollar amount because each damage will be different. They have to be assessed, but it will have some explanation of how the process works at the minimum, how you will be, how, how you will be charged, not necessarily the amount you will be charged. Uh, and moving out later, well, if you stay in the apartment uh, after your lease is up and you didn't re-sign a new contract, what may happen is that, sure, they're going to keep on collecting a monthly rent, but it's going to be a higher amount. And for only for so long, they might do that. They eventually probably kick you out. Um, if you move out earlier, that's your breaking lease earlier. There's typically a fee. Expect at least one month rent and a few other items. That's, that'll be something typical. Or they will specify the actual amount, which could be more than one month. Conditions where landlord may enter rental unit. So because of maintenance and some other actual regulations, like they have to be able to go in there from time to time, especially let's say uh, if there's gas units and stuff like that, they have to inspect the heaters and the uh, and the air conditioning or just do regular maintenance that happens. Uh, so it will specify when and how the, the landlord is uh, allowed to enter the unit. Um, if you can make requests, like I must be notified at least, so you know, uh, things like that. But uh, yeah, there are, there are conditions where the landlord uh, can just walk in at any given time to, to do just regular work that they have to do. This is more common in apartment complexes. Explaining the home buying process. So let's talk about buying a home now. Determine home ownership needs, how many rooms you need, what size of family you have, or how, how large of a place you're comfortable with. And uh, so just pretty much needs and wants of what kind of house you like. Benefits of home ownership. Well, there's the pride of ownership. Stability of location. And those are more feel good type of uh, benefits uh, regarding the financial benefits. You do have the option to deduct property taxes and mortgage interest uh, from your taxes. Potential increase in value of your home. Over time, values do go up, but it's not guaranteed. So there might be downtimes and this is just very common. There's ups and downs, even though over time they do go up. 
lifestyle flexibility. Express your indiv uh, individuality, uh, decorating, remodeling, etc. You make it your own home. Drawbacks, financial uncertainty, obtaining money for the down payment. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, down payment can actually put some stress on your finances. Qualifying for mortgage financing. Uh, well, you have to qualify. And then if you do qualify, did you get a good interest rate? Uh, things like that. So these are drawbacks, things you have to work with or work around. Uh, changing property values, as I mentioned, property values over time go up, but it's not guaranteed they go up year every year. Um, some areas can get really depressed if they have like a, a downfall of the industry and shut down some business in the area where the economy contracts and that those real estate values never recover or at least don't recover for decades. Uh, it happens. Uh, limited mobility may be difficult to sell your home quickly. Uh, yes. And even in a normal circumstance, it takes time to sell a home. It can take a few months, several months sometimes. And it, you're stuck. You can't move until you get that done. Higher living cost. Uh, well, sure. Home improvements, maintenance, repairs are on you. The equivalent on rental property where you don't pay uh, maintenance repairs, your rent can go up the next year, your monthly rent. While you have a mortgage payment, the mortgage itself can be fixed. Uh, rising real estate taxes. This can be a situation. However, it's not unique to home ownership. If there's the owners of a, of a rental property, they also suffer increase in real estate taxes. If that happens, they're going to increase your rent. So it, the difference will be how you see it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. Now, one difference that I will say, if that impacts your monthly expense when you're renting, it's easy to move out and find something more suitable. But selling your home can be more complex if all of a sudden you get pushed out because of high real estate taxes or other insurance could also be an issue. Insurance is less volatile, but it could happen. Assess the types of housing available. Single family dwelling, that's your standard home. Your standalone home, your standard house. Multi-dwelling, these are your townhomes, townhouses, duplexes, quads, et cetera. Uh, uh, now, while the condominium is also multi-unit, we just like to uh, differentiate those two because then we just have to work condominium, which is kind of an apartment building, but you're actually buying the unit, you're not renting it. Uh, you own your individual units in a building with several units. So still multi-unit, but we do like to separate or differentiate from duplexes and townhomes. It is not a type of building structure, but rather a legal form of home ownership. Operative housing, these are co-ops, very similar to condominium, but uh, it's a nonprofit organization. You're actually a member that owns shares of that building. And that ownership of shares allows you to rent a unit in a building with multiple units. Uh, and this is just kind of a, just a legal structure thing. Because what you do, if you want to sell, what you're really doing is you're selling your shares. And then you move out. Um, but that is just some technical process. But it feels the same as a condominium uh, you or, or any other real estate. Uh, when it comes to just the money in, money out, value goes up because the shares go up in value as the building goes up in value. Now, what happens is that cooperatives may be a little harder to get in. Uh, they have a lot more restrictions on who they allow to be a member. We will talk about... home construction now because that's another option available to you there's this thing called manufactured homes pretty much is uh pre-built house parts that then get assembled together at location there are 
not too different than just a house that got built on location, but they have to be classified differently because of different codes and, and all that. Um, but as you see there, just kind of describes why they call manufactured homes. Mobile homes, as it describes, is a home without a foundation and a type is mobile. A type of manufactured home often has less than a thousand square feet. It could be bigger. They have bigger ones now. Offer same features as a conventional house. The features are the same. Safety is always being debated because of the lack of foundation and they tend to depreciate. So from all the home homes that you can buy, most of them just move with market. And as we mentioned, they tend to appreciate over time. But mobile homes tend to depreciate. They don't gain value. This is not the, that, that is the one big difference. If you are building a home, there's a lot more moving parts here in the sense of, uh, of putting it together. And there is some risk associated with it. Does a contractor have needed experience? Um, here's the thing. Building your own home, you get your own design, you get exactly how you want it, custom made and all that. But you have to be very careful who you hire to get it done. You definitely want somebody with a lot of experience and a good reputation. You, you might find some cheap labor, but there's a big investment and you end up with a substandard construction that can really, really cause trouble a few years down the line. Does contractor have a good working relation with architects, suppliers, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, and others? This is very important for two reasons. They, if they tell you uh, we can get this house built in a month or two months or whatever it is, and if they don't have those good relationships, you're six months, eight months down the road and your house is not finished yet. Second, if they don't have a good relationship, let's say with suppliers, for example, electricians and plumbers, all the carpenters, uh, the, this is the work that you don't see. You don't want bad carpentry, bad uh, uh, it's, uh, electrician, electrical work, bad plumbery. Now, it's not that the plumber is bad or the electrician is bad, but if the relation with the contractor is bad, they're going to work on that house accordingly. And that's important. What assurance do you have about the quality of materials? Similar uh, to what I just explained. What are the payment arrangements during construction? You definitely want to have a payment schedule. You don't. You have to give some money up front, but you got to be careful not to give too much because that affects the that may affect the the timeline. Once they have the money, contractors can start delaying, or you might not get good work. Just have a reasonable, sensible payment schedule. Now, delays may happen. Sometimes they're weather delay. Sometimes it's just a supply delay. It could happen. You want to have in your contract something very specific. What delays will be considered? Not the responsibility of the contractor, like weather, uh, versus delays that are definitely the responsibility of the contractor and if there's any penalties. In other words, you know, you pay them less for the delays. Is the contractor license insured? You definitely want that. Is a contractor willing to provide names, address, and phone numbers of satisfied customers? That goes back to their reputation and experience. Are there any complaints about this contractor? You definitely want to look around uh, all the way from has contractor been sued. You can look at public records for that uh, and just look at all the other places where complaints are logged. Written contract should have a time schedule, cost estimates, description of work, and payment schedule. That's at a minimum. There's a lot more details you may want to have that. We will stop this video here and do a part two for the rest of the slides.